Good morning. We'll see if I actually look at the camera today. I normally put the camera on the other side, so I'm used to looking at the left side of my phone. But the Christmas tree is on my right, and I kept staring at the Christmas tree, so I wouldn't have been looking at you guys. I would have been looking at my Christmas tree the whole time. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, okay. So we are in Acts chapter 11 this morning, and I don't know. We'll look. As always, we'll see how far we get, and yeah, as we get going today, um, if you have questions regarding our text or not regarding our text, post up your questions, and I will try to get to them when I can, and thank you, Irma, for the congrats on my book. Um, yes, uh, my prayers for the Psalms did make it onto Amazon, and uh, yeah. When you order the or, the author copies, they take like two weeks to get them to you. So mine might make it here before Christmas. Um, <laughs> so I might actually be doing Amazon Prime and having to buy my own book so that I can get it to people in time. Oh, well, okay. So chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. So everyone finds out what's going down there in Caesarea. Then Peter came up to Jerusalem. Uh, when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, saying, you went into uncircumcised men and ate with them? Ah! So, um, you see this whole thing. It's funny because um, this Sunday, I'm super excited. Uh, we are in Luke chapter uh, 15 and 16, 15 in the morning though, and we have the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and of the lost son or the prodigal son. And it's just a good reminder, and I'm sure it'll become a, a point somewhere in the morning uh, sermon, just that those parables were told in response to the Pharisees' attitude about Jesus associating with um, tax collectors and sinners. And so it's, it's just, isn't it so true that we can look at the Pharisees and be like, oh, those are bad Pharisees. They were these religious people. They didn't like Jesus. They didn't like, and yet here we are a decade later and we see the same type of people in the church of Jesus Christ. We see the same people in the Christian church. And it's really easy for us to go and, and look at former church movements, uh, denominations, groups, or whatever, and we can see all the negative in them, and yet so often we can be blind to when the exact same stuff is beginning in our own midst, when we are becoming the Pharisees, when we are becoming the ones without soft hearts towards the lost. And so, <laughs> you know, uh, we ought to be thankful and grateful when lost people are coming to church, dirty people, funny looking people, smelly people, whatever kind of people. Because they need Jesus just as much as we do. And so it's just great to get people in. But we see it here. The same attitude that was in the Pharisees is now inside the church. You were eating with uncircumcised men. Verse 4, Peter explained to them in order from the beginning, saying. So here's where we might just move quick because we've been over this a few times. Acts 11, 4 or 5. I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance I saw a vision. An object descended like a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners and it came to me when I observed it intently and saw all. I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, birds of the air. And I heard a voice say, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed you must not call common. <laughs> it's funny. I don't, I have a little note in my Bible. Peter says, nothing unclean or, or common has ever gone into my mouth. I have this, what about came out? <laughs> Foot and mouth Peter, right? I mean, he was always saying stuff that, uh, you know, he was saying foolish things. 
It's just always funny to see some of Peter's commentary through the Gospels. So, even right here, not so, Lord. Yeah. Anyway, so verse 10. Now, this was done three times because men are slow learners. And it was drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing at his house. And he said to him, send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you the words by which you and all your household will be saved. So we've talked about that a few times. Good morning, Doug. Good to see you. Um, how Cornelius, regardless of his fear of God and striving for holiness, regardless of his giving of alms, his generosity, regardless that he prayed and fasted, all these things stated in chapter 10, he wasn't saved until he responded to the gospel. And so... This is our go-to verse to explain and just remind us again, we can be very religious on the outside without having transformation and regeneration on the inside. So verse 15 says, I began to speak. The Holy Spirit fell upon them as, it, as upon us at the beginning. So he was saying it's just like Pentecost. Then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus, who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they became silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Repentance unto life. And so there you have it. You've got um, Peter recapping pretty much all of chapter 10 for us. And so if you've missed everything the last week or so, you just got it all right there. Not all the minor points that we went over, but it's all right there. Good morning, Julia. And and so we're moving on tomorrow. This was like a wrap-up day. It's kind of hard because I would just be going down all the things we've studied this last week. So maybe I'll just say this today. Um, if you haven't watched and been with us in this Bible study the last week, um, you can find these on my Facebook page. You can like click albums and videos or just go to YouTube. If you look up the Revival Church on YouTube, I, I store these there every day and you can do the entire book of Acts from chapter one up and the entire Gospel of John. And on top of that, um, if you wanna make sure you watch with us tomorrow, right about there is the little three dots and if you follow Joe and make sure you have like your notifications turned on, then as soon as I hit go on these things, you will get your little notification. But I'm pretty much Johnny on the spot, 7.30 every morning. And so I'd love it if you guys were with us live. I know I've got a bunch of you on here with me right now, but other people watch this throughout the day. And if you're able, some of you have work and other great you know reasons, join in. And uh, if you guys got questions, post them. I love answering questions. I feel like I have nothing to talk about. Other than maybe that, that closing line, they granted the Gentiles repentance unto life. You know, And once again, uh, we always see repentance tied in with salvation. And the analogy I gave last Sunday was that repentance is similar to a pulse. Now, if you want to see if someone is alive, quite often you can check their pulse. Now, that's a sign that they're alive. You know, people can have a pulse and not be breathing. There's other things, right? But when you see that, that's a good indicator. Repentance is a great indicator that people are born again and saved. On the flip side, pulses don't make you alive. You could be put on a machine that gives you a pulse while you're still dead. So, you could go in and take a corpse and, and pump its heart. It doesn't make it alive. Repentance doesn't bring us salvation, but repentance is a gift of God. It's been granted unto the Gentiles. What do you mean it's been granted unto the Gentiles? Well, I think one thing about repentance that maybe gets misrepresented, rather than something we have to do, 
You have to repent if you want to come to Jesus. No, 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 no. It's something you get. Like, God will enable me to be free from all this sin and junk that's ruining my life. Repentance is a gift. And when I see receive his gift of grace, I also gladly receive his gift of the ability to repent, right? That he enables me and helps me. And he, as you can see with Cornelius, Cornelius was seeking God. And so he began repenting even before he got saved. And that happens a lot too. In fact, in my own life, I think that's more so what happened with me, where I started seeing things and, and, and exactly at what point was I born again is so hard to tell. Um, but what I do know is that when I absolutely know I was born again, filled with the Spirit and serving the Lord, that leading up to that point, a whole lot of repentance was taking place. And it was like God was laying it on my heart. And he not only laid it on my heart, but he gave me the strength to do it. And so when you see people with no sign of repentance or no desire for repentance, it's kind of like coming up to a body and checking it and not, not finding a pulse. It's like, eh, that's a bad sign. And so that's a thing important for us to remember is by their fruits you shall know them. When you look at another person and you don't see repentance, that's not good. It doesn't mean necessarily they're not saved. We see carnal Christians in the Bible. First Corinthians is full of the stories of carnal Christians but I always tell people, I don't mess around with salvation. See, I don't lay heavies on the person in, in particular that I'm, that I'm witnessing and, and watching, but I never take for granted. I'm never going to just, they're probably saved and then find out I was wrong, right? I, I, I always want to be praying like they're not saved until I know that they are, until at least I have a peace, right? Because I don't really know their hearts. But when I have that peace, then I can go to bed and rest at night. So there's that last thing is where Peter mentions, hey, it's pretty cool. It seems like God is granting repentance to the Gentiles also. So that's it. We're going to get into Paul and the missionary journeys. The ball is going to get rolling with all that stuff real soon. So that's exciting. Uh, one last time, if you're on Facebook, you can hit the three buttons there to get up and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to our church. And if you're on Facebook, you should subscribe to our church on YouTube also because there's stuff that I post on YouTube that I don't post on here and fun little, little videos we do. So God bless you guys. Hope you had a good Bible study and a great day. And I will see you guys tomorrow.